But I'll, I'll tell you, I kind of like the deeper guys in this draft. I, I would definitely go D-line over O-line early if I was going tackle because I love Javon Foster from Missouri who you know has got really, really strong hands and he's played right tackle and left tackle and he's got really long arms and he's got the frame to put on about 10 more pounds and he's already about 320. And I, to me, he's a monster. I love J.C. Latham. Um, some people, I've got a buddy of mine who says, Krug, you know, he's fool's gold. He's going to be a guard. But to me, he looks like a 15-year starter as a right tackle. So um, I, I'd be very intrigued by Latham. But I And I kind of like Garrett Greenfield, you know, who I believe set the combine record uh, for vertical uh, for an offensive lineman. Garrett Greenfield, let me see, I have it here in my notes. Garrett Greenfield had like a 37 and a half inch vertical, 38 and a half inch vertical at, at, at 6'5, uh, 311 pounds. 38 and a half inch vertical? That's the combine record. And him and Mason McCormick for the South Dakota uh, State Jackrabbits, those guys played next to each other. I'd like to have them both. I think McCormick's a badass, and I think Greenfield's a steal. Um, I love both those guys, and they're probably going to be – Mason McCormick's probably a fourth-round pick, and and Greenfield's probably a fifth- or a sixth-round pick. My question for those late – and we're getting into it. Let's get into those sleepers here. So 49ers go D-line early. By the way, Michael Hall I like a lot. My my strategy for the 49ers, by the way, just I want to get it on record to you, Kruger, before next week, is uh, to stay put at 31, even maybe move back a few spots, mm-hmm. and and be mobile upward on day two second round can you get say johnny newton and then move up for an offensive lineman get suamata ia in round two in the top 50 moving up from 63 or move up to get into the top 75 from the third round pick and hit three top 75 players that's my strategy for the 49ers looking at how things might fall in the draft but let's say they do not draft an offensive lineman early and do you think the the blake fishers of the world and the um, you know, the Rosengarten, I don't know, Kuiper had Rosengarten going at 31. I think Rosengarten's a second or third round guy. Uh, you I mentioned Foster. There's um, the uh, the tackle, Christian Jones, right, from from Texas. He looked great in the one-on-ones in Mobile. I mean, he was he won almost all those reps, and yeah, he looked good. My question on those guys, and we saw it with a with a guy like Spencer Burford, where he look, he's like, oh, he's athletic. He's got long enough arms. He was a college tackle. He's probably an NFL tackle. And they're like, nope, straight to guard. So many of these guys are going to get pushed straight to guard in the NFL. My question on these guys later is it feels like it falls off with the true, true NFL offensive tackles in this draft. And the depth is so deep at guard and center uh, are the Fosters and the Jones and uh, Fishers. Are these guys going to stick at tackle in the NFL is my question. Well, it's a case by case situation for sure. Um, I, I think some are and some aren't. I, I mean, I think Foster for sure is going to play tackle. I love the I love the footwork. I love the arm length. Um, I, I really think he's a he's a special player. Um, as far as you know, across the board, you know, the kid from Texas may or may not stay there. Um, Blake Fisher, I think, is going to stay at tackle. Um, another guy that you know, Caden Wallace might be a guard from Penn State. They looked at him. Ladarius Henderson might be a guard. You know, I really like him, by the way. He started at ASU and finished at Michigan. And, man, the way he could pull out and get in front of the running, running back quorum in the national championship game in the college football playoff, I thought Ladarius Henderson looked incredible. I mean, the way he moved at 6'4", 310. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's – you know, I kind of like, um, even later, I kind of like the Maryland kid, Gottlieb Ayadaisy. Um, He's like 6'4", 310, another guy who moves really, really well. Um, and then, you know, as far Frank Crum, the ginger from Wyoming. Yeah, I, I was going to bring up Frank Crum. He's like, the, he's like this year's day three Mike McGlinchey, right? 6'8", athletic, can get out on the run and, and block a little bit, and is definitely a tackle with his height in the NFL. Yeah. Um, there's another guy you got to look at. His name's Anim Don- Donqua, and he plays for Howard, and he's 6'8", 362. Now, I don't know if he's going to fit the Niners scheme, but he reminds me a lot of Daywan Jones. 
lot of day one Jones. He's got the day one Jones build. This guy's monstrous. So, I mean, there's there's good prospects. It's all about how much can you develop your guy? You know, can your offensive line coach develop um, these guys? And then how severe your need is. You know, I mean, yeah, the, if you said, who's a tackle? Well, Alt's a tackle. Uh, Fuaga's a tackle. Fashanu's a tackle. Latham, I think, is a tackle. Fatanu's a tackle. Mims is a tackle. Guyton's a tackle. And then, and Suma, would you say, how do you pronounce Sumatea? Uh, it's, it's Suomata Ia is how you're supposed Suomata to pronounce it. Suomata Ia. Yeah. Yeah, he's a tackle. Um, Patrick Paul is high cut from Houston, but he's a tackle. Amagaji from um, Yale, he's a tackle. I, I don't know what to do with him because he it's had hard a quad to injury this year. Yale tape. It's, of course, he's dominating his competition there, but he didn't get a chance because of that quad injury to to compete at the senior bowl. He hasn't had a chance to work out yet. The fact that that injury is still not healed up, because that's something that happened, what, midway through the season. Um, maybe he's uh, maybe he's your sleeper just because he's got all the traits, but you're just going to have to redshirt him and and see what you get. But he's got all the traits you're looking for in a starting NFL tackle. Oh, he's got like 80, 86 inch um, reach across the board as far as wingspan. Um, he's amazing, but he's probably a fourth round pick. You know, it really depends. I think the way the Niners, you know, I think the Niners, by re-signing Colton McKivitz, they basically allowed themselves to take any kind of tackle they want. If they feel like a guy's got potential, they can take him and, you know, go long-term with him. Um, they don't have to go with the guy who's ready to go right now. The guy that I'm a little nervous about would be Jordan Morgan. I think his his upside's a little limited. Like, I would be really disappointed if the Niners traded up two or three spots and took Jordan Morgan. To me, that's just too safe. Too yeah, he, safe. He, he's so safe. He's he's an easy watch. He's a smooth mover. His his arm length is is shy of not only shy of ideal at 34 for a tackle, but shy of acceptable, you know, under 33 inches. And you just don't see many guys get a shot. And he's not really a knock you back type of player that that you you project into guard and being just a real ass kicker there either. So he's a player that I like if he falls to the right spot and, and you see where he ends up playing for you. But if you're trying to force him into tackle early in the first round, yeah, I'm out on that pick as well. Uh, I'm not, not crazy about Morgan. I know there's a lot of people that really like him. Um, I just see, you know, just kind of, I mean, uh, a guy, I don't think he's, I don't, I mean, I know he, you could, if you had to play, if you didn't have McKivitz and you needed someone to play right away, maybe he'd be attractive. But to me, if you're going to go tackle, you know, the arm length matters. I mean, the, you know, certain measurements matter for certain positions. You know, the geometry of the game with all these speed rushers, you got to have, you got to have a long arm tackle. I mean, the guy that they drafted last year out of Hawaii that I really liked, Il Manning, he played left tackle and played it well. They didn't give him the chance to play left tackle or play tackle at all because he had 32 and a half inch arms. Yep. You just don't you know, get the shot. You're immediately day one a guard in the NFL if you're sub 33. It's just the it's the way they treat yeah. you like a leper. Uh <laughs> you mentioned the the South Dakota State right tackle. Um it was Greenfield. Left tackle, Greenfield. And then he was a right tackle, right? Because then you had McCormick, who's the right guard. Well, he's putting, here, here's the thing about Greenfield that's so intriguing. He has 31 career starts at left tackle. He's got 24 career starts at right tackle. Um, you know, so that's that. What I like, too, is when I read the the Dane Brugler report on him, and Brugler goes so freaking deep, it's scary. It'll I like, like the beast. Uh, it's Br worth Brugler. Everybody Brugler. go out and subscribe to The Athletic. It's worth just to get the beast. It's worth the entire yeah. year's subscription I to mean, The Athletic. Brugler's the kind of guy I'd be like Greenfield's younger sister quit uh, <laughs> brownies in the seventh in the fourth fourth grade because uh, they didn't have they had car problems. But I mean, I mean, this guy has so much. In, but what I love about Greenfield is in that report, uh, 38 and a half inch vertical, which is crazy. Mean streak. You know, I was like a mean streak in my offensive lineman. To me, a mean streak in your offensive lineman means everything. So um, I, I'm a big Greenfield fan, and I, I I think he's a perfect swing tackle. And I would take to me if I could have um, if I could you know do it the way I want to do it, I'd go other positions early and try to see if I could get Javon Foster and Greenfield later. And if I could get both of them, I'd like to get both of them.
just yeah, go go defensive line in round one, and then draft like four offensive linemen and let them fight for that job, right? Get yeah. a center, a guard, a tackle, uh, some combo players, and let them. By the way, how good was South Dakota State? I know because they, well, they won the they won the national championship, and they got a they got a apparently they got an, a center, which is the reason McCormick played guards because they got another guy who's a center who's who's better than both of them is going to be in the draft next year. I didn't. Yeah, I mean, I didn't watch a lot of South Dakota State, uh, you know, games. I watched some of the highlights of their guys. McCormick is nasty, and he went to the combine and had a great workout. And I'll tell you this: their running back is big time, Isaiah Davis. I mean, I'd be happy with Greenfield, McCormick, and Isaiah Davis. Could you imagine if the Niners drafted three guys from South Dakota State? Oh, well, it's North crazy. Dakota State didn't work out, so they'll go to the rival, the Jackrabbits, go uh, South Dakota State in this draft and don't have to spend well, you, three first-round picks on them. 